Today we're talking about the David Michelini era of Avengers comics. A weird time in the series where the man essentially had to write his books in between Jim Shooter. But before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to Comic Island for more reviews of comics, new and old. As mentioned, the Jim Shooter era I did not find particularly good, but I also found it quite confusing. As the man rose up in prominence at Marvel, Jim Shooter kind of came and went from the Avengers series in a way no other writer in the history of the Avengers ever did. Because of that, other writers, including the likes of big names such as Tom DeFalco and Marv Wolfman, would occasionally fill in. While most of what I'm referring to there are individual issues featuring guest writers, one man, David Michelini, wrote a slew of Avengers books pretty much in between Jim Shooter's run. And I wanted to take a bit of time and talk about the Avengers books not written by Shooter from this time period because they're just so distinct and different. They feel worth talking about and grading separately, though it should be noted that it is very clear as Shooter gained power over the Avengers series and Marvel itself, his vision of the Avengers team increasingly took hold even beyond Avengers books uh, that weren't exactly written by him. Editors have a lot of power, and Jim Shooter was famous for wielding it, driving many talented people away from the company with this behavior in the years to come. The shame of it all is that there is a very different version of the Avengers floated around by David Michelini before Jim Shooter had fully taken control. And yes, this video is coming down just as hard, if not harder, on Jim Shooter than the previous round all about him, but what can I say? He's the villain of this story. Starting around issue 181 and continuing until things go south in the late 190s, McLeany shows a version of the Avengers unlike anything we've ever seen before or since. It really comes down to book number 181. In it, we're introduced to some new ideas that, to Shooter's credit, had been slowly percolating during his initial run with the series. The government is threatening to revoke privileges the Avengers enjoy as part of America's perennial superhero team. So they are assigned Henry Peter Gyrich in order to restructure the team and comply with certain government standards. In response to the by then bloated roster of Avengers floating on and off the team, things are trimmed down to just seven members. Six established characters joined by newcomer Falcon. Installed on the team as an overt move of affirmative action on the part of the government, while many other long-standing members were suddenly, and without uh, ceremony or anything, just dismissed. The dynamics here I find really interesting. This is by far the most an external body managed to restrict and control any iteration of Avengers to date. I really would have liked to see that idea explored more than unfortunately it really was around this time period, as it has a lot of potential to it. Adding to that was Michelini's strong ability to zero in on character dynamics, leading to a fun sense of an active team worth following issue by issue. Falcon joining the superhero team was particularly notable because he was very much aware and annoyed by the fact that this was done solely because he was black. Yet he joins the team just the same because Captain America is his friend and Sam Wilson, more than anything else, is a good partner. Meanwhile, Michelini really brings the series back in a way I feel it had been dormant ever since the days of Roy Thomas almost a hundred issues before. Roy Thomas, by the way, wound up being one of Jim Shooter's many casualties as he took over as editor-in-chief at Marvel. Michelini immediately sets out to take us on a fun, worthwhile series of stories. Even exploring Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver's origin in a fun way that ultimately led to those two characters' histories being practically indecipherable. The man took full advantage of talented artists like John Byrne and Sal Buscema, by then established Avengers creators who I feel languished under Jim Shooter, and right away you can see them sort of return to life with Michelini's writing. In a way I really feel is absent from the Shooter books, even though we're talking about the exact same artists. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter how good those artists are if they're drawing a poorly thought out or uncreative story which was Jim Shooter's problem for vast swaths of his time with the Avengers. He never had untalented artists, but he wrote very poor scripts. Michelini and the other writers, on the other hand, tell us these fun and vivid stories where the artists flourish, and the stories suddenly feel a lot more like Avengers books. This goes beyond Michelini and definitely includes the likes of virtually every other guest writer around this time period. Their stories feature stuff like villains being colorful, creative, and unpredictable while the Avengers are full of personality and quickly dive in and face the problems at hand. Michelini found a fun combination of characters, new and old, to fill out the roster. 
added a whole bunch of interesting political dynamics, and it's always fun to see Hawkeye get hilariously rejected from the team and throw an absolute fit over it. The shame of it all is it ultimately doesn't go anywhere, and this fun dynamic really feels like the eye in the middle of Hurricane Jim. A brief moment of peace before everything in the Avengers series went horribly wrong. You can see as Jim Shooter gains power in the company, David Michelini's ideas take more and more of a spot in the back seat. Almost right away, the Avengers escape from government oversight. And though it's a cathartic moment to see Captain America reassert control over the team after Gyrich was being so antagonistic, the promise of exploring the cool idea of a government really controlling the Avengers is abandoned far too quickly in the process. The new, more focused roster also gets quickly abandoned. This is what I mean when I say Jim Shooter was having an effect on Michelini's version of the Avengers, because over time, they start to resemble Shooter's ideas more and more, which leads to a visible dip in quality, even from the books not specifically written by Jim Shooter. The thing I find most frustrating is when Michelini seemed to have the most control over the Avengers. He was writing something that reminded me a lot of acclaimed series Justice League International. Both runs involved radically changing the existing team, making things more grounded and character focused, all the while taking on a certain quirky flair to it. But I bring up Justice League International for a very specific reason. That was produced at the end of the 1980s, and was quite influential in how superhero team stories were told from then on out. Michelini's run largely takes place in the late 70s and early 80s, meaning that Marvel could have preempted the series by nearly a full decade if they had gone in this direction. That could have really changed the history of both Justice League and the Avengers at both Marvel and DC, in a way that could have very well been for the better. Sadly, instead we got Avengers number 200. Remembering that this grading system is tailored to only compare Avengers comics against each other, I place Michelini's books just below average. At its best, it is spectacular. At its worst, it gets completely derailed as the series charged straight into its all-time low points. There's some cool ideas, phenomenal artwork, and exciting moments, but sadly none of it lasts very long. Though Michelini wrote many Avengers comics, either around or even with Jim Shooter, it's clear that the more Jim Shooter was involved, the worse David's books got, and the more his ideas were being washed out. As such, even though David wrote at least 25 or so Avengers books, I'd say about only half of those are really worth reading. If I haven't made it abundantly clear by now, I don't rest a lot of blame on David Michelini for this era of Avengers comics and the problems it suffered. I could be wrong, and I see people disagreeing or having their own interpretation of events. I'm really just going by comments people have made years later and what I can get out of the books themselves. But to me, this is how I've come to view the Avengers around this time period as they moved into the 1980s. Furthering this is that Michelini would return to the Avengers on occasion as a guest writer in the future, and always did a good job. I believe the man had all the great signs of a writer who had the potential to truly reimagine the Avengers into something we still haven't really seen to this day, and never really got a chance to do so to begin with. I might go so far as to argue the biggest tragedy in the entire history of the Avengers publication run was that Jim Shooter for a long time defined the team's history, while David Michelini sadly does not. Just the same, we are grading the final product, not the potential of these comics. Like it or not, it should be recognized that Avengers history simply wouldn't be the same without the missteps, and there's really no changing that. If I were to be able to wave a magic wand and wipe away the Jim Shooter era, well we very well could wipe away the MCU in the process, or so much more. You never really know. <laughs> so setting aside hypotheticals, we are looking entirely at the raw quality of the David Michelin Avengers comics. And while they're a fun read for the curious, or those who want to see a little bit of Avengers editorial history for themselves, and judge whether or not I correctly interpreted the situation, in the world of Avengers otherwise, you could do a lot better, since a lot of the cool parts of this era didn't last very long and are hardly explored here. A C grade should reflect this sort of middling opinion I have of this particular run of Avengers books. It has some strong moments of storytelling quality, but it never really came together into a proper run of Avengers titles fully worth your time. It is far better than anything Jim Shooter did, and that's why we definitely were going to talk about it separately from him. And I would argue it is even better than Steve Englehart's take on the Avengers from before Jim Shooter. <laughs> 
But compared to the core history of the Avengers in the first 150 issues, or a bunch of comics we haven't talked about yet, David Michelini's Avengers, unfortunately, comes up a little short. But then again, things in the history of the Avengers books have been so much worse. We'll talk about whether or not that's the case in the 1980s as we get a new writer named Roger Stewart. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.